I wanted to emphasize why we do need to worry about African swine fever virus uh, in the Caribbean region. It is spreading around the world as we speak at the moment in new areas. It's already wreaked havoc in the Caribbean regions and our colleagues from certain Caribbean countries in the north may remember this virus when it decimated their pig industries in the Caribbean. It's a really tough and resistant virus, so when you get it, it's extremely difficult to get rid of. And in the Caribbean, we have many people coming from uh, Africa over to the Caribbean, and we've seen the virus being transported in pig products, in, dare I say, sandwiches. In pork, it sticks around and survives for very, very long periods of time, even in processed or salted or cured meats. So it's a real risk to us. African swine fever virus is very similar in a lot of ways to classical swine fever virus, and you can't tell the difference. But there are, there are subtle differences. As with a classical swine fever virus, it's a hemorrhagic fever. However, most of African swine fever viruses out there cause a 100% mortality. We call it the Ebola virus of pigs because it disintegrates the inside of pigs like Ebola does to the people that get it, and they bleed out. It has natural reservoir hosts, it, um, especially uh, in Africa, warthogs, bush pigs, um, are the natural reservoir hosts, and here you can see a warthog here in Africa. But there's also soft ticks, or Nithodora's ticks, and we do have species of soft ticks that are capable of transmitting African swine fever virus in the Caribbean region. Where is it at the moment? I'll have a, another quick slide on this, but it's endemic in many African countries. It's been endemic in Sardinia, a little island in Europe, for 35 years. The European Union has thrown everything at it and it can't get rid of it in Sardinia. But really this is the, this is the thing at the moment, is it's, 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 it's now in a large area, and I'll explain to you, in Russia and it's in the European Union and it's spreading. As I said, it's invaded the Caribbean. Our colleagues in Cuba, Haiti and Dominican Republic will know about it. And critically, there is no vaccine, so there is nothing you can do about it as regards vaccination. That's what makes it so dangerous. Such a nasty disease potentially threatening the pig industries around the world. Um, I think it's the biggest veterinary threat at the moment. I would say that, but I think it's the biggest veterinary threat to livestock industries around the world. You don't know how many pigs there are in China, but if it goes to China, it is going to be a dis global disaster. These are the kinds of things that happen because it can only be uh, got rid of uh, by stamping out and killing loads and loads of pigs. What happens in Africa is, like many viruses with reservoir hosts and, tick and, and insects or, uh, um, uh, or an insect vector, um, or an arthropod vector that transmits it, they often have a nice, cozy little life somewhere where they're not causing any problems. And this cozy little life for African swine fever virus is within this warthog burrow. The warthog's fine, the ticks are fine, and the virus is fine. Then what happens? We bring in domestic pigs into the situation, and they're certainly not fine. What happened recently to make the virus spread so, so significant is that a virus from here got on a ship from, uh, and came up through the Suez Canal, came round here and docked in the port of Potty here. And I happened to be head of the African Swine Fever Virus Reference Laboratory at the time at the Institute for Animal Health in Perbra, and I got a call from the Georgians. And they said to me, we think we might have African Swine Fever Virus here. And I said, Oh, no, you can't have African swine fever virus there. And then the guy explained what was going on. And this is the subtle difference between classical swine fevers and African swine fever virus. He talked about fields of dead pigs. Pigs going into the rivers, floating down the rivers. This was a highly virulent virus that had come from Africa and was spreading out of control. It was misdiagnosed at the start and it spread very, very rapidly. The first question, one of the first questions I asked was, is it occurring in pigs that are vaccinated against classical swine fever? And they said, yes. Is it occurring in all age groups of pigs? Because there are subtle differences between, between some of the differentials I'll talk about later as to what age of pigs. They said, yes. 
What are the symptoms? Basically, rapid death, hemorrhage. I'll show you a few pictures. I said to the guy, you have got African swine fever virus. Get that sample to us as soon as possible. Immediately it arrived. We diagnosed it. And yes, it was spreading like wildfire. It was too late. It spread up through Russia, 2011, 2012. This is the current situation uh, in 2015, 15. These are all different. The virus is spreading in wild boar. It's spreading in domestic pigs. These are all European Union countries now. So the European Union's very worried about this. And it's pretty much endemic, probably endemic in the wild boar population. So it's going to be very, very difficult to get rid of. It's been there for years now, 2007 to 2015, and it's still spreading. OK? So how do you recognize it? Because that's why we're here today. Very similar to classical swine fever virus. It's a, it's a virus that causes hemorrhage and edema. It breaks, the, it breaks up the circulator, breaks up the blood vessels. So what do you see? You see lots of hemorrhage. You see very similar signs to classical swine fever virus. You see loss of appetite, recumbency, vomiting, diarrhea, joint swelling, rapidly progressing to hemorrhage and death. If you open those animals up, you see hemorrhage everywhere hemorrhage everywhere, okay? This is the same slide, and I put this in, I know it's not African swine fever, it's classical swine fever virus, but exactly the same thing happens. When pigs get a fever, this is what they do. This is how they start, this would happen. But very rapidly with African swine fever virus, and sometimes in a per acute way, the pigs will die showing limited clinical signs. You can see a bit of redness, but they will drop dead very, very quickly. This is very common. The, the hemorrhage of the ear happens first. And then it spreads very rapidly over the whole of the body. And you see basically red pigs. And within about five to seven days, they die. What do you see inside? You see multiple hemorrhages of all the organs. This, uh, th these lymph nodes here, they lose all their structure. They lose all their structure. These are lymph nodes here and they look like blood clots, and they feel like blood clots. These are the kidneys here. This is the spleen. When you open up a pig with African swine fever virus, you are confronted with a very, very large spleen. You put your finger on that spleen, and your finger goes in that spleen. It is friable. It is hemorrhagic. It is enlarged. It is uh, causing a lot of problems. You see hemorrhages in the heart. You see enteritis hemorrhages. And in some cases, don't go away thinking every single strain of African swine fever virus causes 100% mortality. There are viruses out there that do cause low, lower virulence, and you do sometimes get chronic symptoms as well. And once a virus has been circulating for a, a long period of time, as it was in Spain, there is evidence that it reduces in its virulence and pigs start surviving. And that's obviously really important for control to know that. Similar. To, to classical swine fever virus, basically, if you see pigs with these types of symptoms, you have to differentiate these diseases in the lab. It's the only way of doing it, yeah? So you have to differentiate classical and African swine fever and think about things like PRRS and think about some bacterial infections. But if you see these kind of symptoms, you need to get, you need to get them into the lab very rapidly, um, and, and the lab will do their magic with their PCR and their ELISAs and their virus isolations and all the things like that, and they'll be able to tell you um, what, what you have. How about control? Well, this is, this is tough because there is no vaccine, so it's tough. So it's the standard stamping out. That's what's going on all over Europe in these parts here. This is the edge of Europe. Different zones, free zones, zones within, with infected wild boar, zones with infected domestic pigs and wild boar with different colors here. And they have to ha you need early detection, you need movement restrictions, you need slaughter, you need tracing, all those kind of things that you all know about that you'd have to put in, you have to put in place. So finally, um, just from a, from, a, from, a, from a Caribbean perspective, what are our risks? The virus got in almost certainly to Caribbean countries through airline waste, yeah, because it's very tough. So the airline waste was taken off the flights and was given to pigs. Don't do that. <laughs> Not a good idea. If it is heat treated, it should be okay. 
the virus is killed if it's heated to 70 degrees, uh, if it's boiled or heated to 70 degrees for around half an hour, you know, you, you, there, are, there are ways of getting rid of, the, rid of the virus. Obviously, illegally imported pigs and pig products. Avoid it um, if you can. Visitors coming in with sandwiches from Africa. It's happened before. The virus was taken to the Netherlands and Belgium by somebody taking a ham from Spain up with them and tossing it over a fence. And what was behind the fence? Free range pigs. You've got an outbreak. And obviously in backyard farms, they're at more risk and they might, if you have pigs, and this is the peccary, is that right? Uh, all these types of pigs that we have across the Caribbean, these wild pigs, they're likely to, to be susceptible to African swine fever virus. And they contribute usually to the epidemiological situation if you get it.